The world of 10 years ago can sometimes feel impossibly recent, even idyllic compared to what you've got today. But like an old TV show that's mostly held up well, the illusion crumbles when technology comes into the picture. I'm Michael Fisher, and 10 years ago, the phone housed in my holster was the HTC Mogul. This is the Mr. Mobile Retro Review, brought to you by Adblock Browser. So this big old meatball was more than just old. It was in fact one of the last phones of its kind. Behind the aspirational names the carriers and marketers gave it, Mogul, Titan, this was the PPC 6800, an iteration on an idea that had been around a while. In an era when four out of five Americans were still buying dumb phones, this was a pocket PC. And it lived up to its personal computer namesake, for better or worse. Donning my rose-tinted glasses for a moment, I still remember the smug satisfaction I got from loading full websites on this thing, at a time when commercials had convinced many that the only phone capable of such things had an Apple logo. And the contrarian in me appreciated how the mogul bucked the minimalist trend that was just then taking hold. In 2018, you're lucky to get a dedicated camera key on your phones. In 2008, this thing had 19 hardware buttons on its casing, not counting the pop-out keyboard. I mean, you turned on Wi-Fi with a switch. There was a jog dial for BlackBerry converts, a D-pad for dumb phone expats, a touchscreen for everyone else, and a stylus to hit the tiny targets on it. That display was resistive, super scratch-prone, and less than three inches across. But I guess with double status LEDs, who needs a screen, right? Just like a PC of the time, there was plenty of I.O. Mini USB, trans flash, and an IR port that today is almost as rare as the removable battery. I got to know that battery pretty well because I frequently had to swap it for a fresh one. Endurance was not great, and since there was no fast charging to speak of, carrying a spare was wise. Considering the retail price of this thing at the time, that was a big disappointment. And for all the capability of Windows Mobile, it was effectively eight years old when this phone launched, with parts of its code base dating all the way back to Windows CE in 1996. Yeah, it was powerful, but its instability and a very sluggish interface made it hard for me to avoid the siren song of the iPhone 3G, launched in July of 2008. That phone is the one I left the mogul for, and I was hardly alone. By the end of 2009, Microsoft had lost almost a third of its smartphone market share, while Apple's grew by 32%. I ended up leaving the iPhone pretty quickly, but not so I could return to Windows Mobile. By then, Palm's WebOS, Google's Android, and Microsoft's own Windows Phone 7 series were so much more usable than the old Windows Mobile that returning just wasn't in the cards. I do have fond memories of the mogul. Its GPS navigated me from Virginia to Boston to start my first career out of college. Its big keyboard kept me in touch with the friends I left behind. And its two megapixel camera documented the transition, uh, well, as best it could. But remember, nostalgia is an unreliable narrator. I was active on Howard forums at the time, and here's what I had to say about the mogul shortly after leaving it in 2008. It could do everything, but it could do nothing well. Crashed all the time, and I had to soft reset it at least once a day to keep the damn thing working. GPS wouldn't get a fix, OS was ugly, laggy, prone to memory leaks. What a disaster of a phone. Man, nothing like a first-hand account from past you to slap you out of that sentimental haze, huh? So I don't mourn the mogul as I do devices like the Palm Pre that died before their time. And I'm really not sorry that the iPhone's debut hastened the demise of Windows Mobile, because it made room for so many better things. I don't much like ending on a cliche, but this video seems to need it. Some things should indeed stay in the past. Things that also belong in the past? Terrible internet ads on your smartphone or tablet. They eat up your data, burn your battery faster, and they can even open you up to viruses. Fortunately, you can protect yourself from these horrors with today's sponsor, 
Adblock Browser for iOS and Android lets you block those irritating ads. It lets you browse anonymously so companies can't track your online activity, and it preserves your data buckets and your battery so you can focus on what matters in the moment. You can also whitelist certain sites you like so everybody wins. Get Adblock Browser for iOS and Android free at adblockbrowser.to slash mrmobile. That's adblockbrowser.to slash mrmobile, and I'll leave the link in the description. Next to that link is the subscribe button, folks. Please press it if you enjoyed this video, and share your memories from your favorite, or even your least favorite phone, in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.